But there are not many skeletons known uh, from the Magdalenian period, and this is the only skeleton of its kind in the United States, and so it's a very important specimen. As far as we can work out, our skeleton is probably somewhere between 12 and 15,000 years old. So I don't know if you've ever had this thing where you just have an itch because something is wrong and it needs to get fixed, and the longer you leave it, the more irritating it is. Magdalenian woman's skull has been like that. It's been a burr under my saddle for 10 years. Magdalenian girl, or as we now think Magdalenian woman, is a specimen that was discovered in France in the 1910s. And she comes from the region called the Dordogne, which is where the famous Lascaux cave is. And just a few miles away is a rock shelter called Cap Blanc. What happened was they were building a flood defense around a Magdalenian era rock shelter. And they came across the uh, woman by essentially hitting her in the head with what we thought at the time was a shovel, but which um, on forensic reconstruction probably turns out to have been a pick. Henry Field purchased this skeleton in 1926. So it's been in the possession of the Field Museum ever since. Now at some stage after Henry Field had bought uh, the Magdalenian woman's skeleton, the skull was reconstructed. So one of the research questions we had was to what extent is the restoration, which we believe was done in the 1920s, actually providing a correct representation of what the skull should actually look like. What we don't like about the current reconstruction of the skull is that it seems to have been produced to look self-consciously Neanderthal. The brow ridge is very heavy, the orbits are very narrow. They've done everything possible to make it look as kind of brutish and primitive as, as they can. And the problem is it just doesn't look anatomically modern. The more you look at it, the more you're like, no. In the course of my career, several times I've used medical technology to find out new things. And when we're talking about looking at human specimens, CT scanning is just very available and uh, relatively easy to do. And the only thing that's difficult from our point of view is moving the specimens to the scanner. So what was really cool this summer was that we had a mobile scanner from Genesis which came to the museum and we parked in the parking lot. What you end up with is a, a series of very narrow strip x-rays from many different angles through the skull. And you can take those slices and get a three-dimensional picture of what the object actually looks like. And then we can subtract out the plaster fill, separate all the fragments, and reconstruct it in a more reasonable manner. But the cool part about this is we're doing it all in software. We don't have to touch the object, and we're not going to damage the object by doing this. What we've done is um, reassembled it in software to a more anatomically modern alignment of the fragments uh, and then taken that solid model and actually printed it in three dimensions. And then having printed the skull, we've then given it to Elizabeth Dynas, who's a forensic reconstruction artist. So I'm really, really pleased that we're able to get a, a new and much more accurate reconstruction of what that skull actually looked like. And for the general public, this is very important to see Magdalenian woman as an individual brought to life by our science.